It started with, it doesn't happen often where an NFL team or organization gets embarrassed, Peyton said. And that's what happened here. Part of it was their own fault relative to spending so much explicit time trying to win the offseason. He goes on to say, there's 20 dirty hands for what was allowed, tolerated in the freaking training room, the meeting rooms, the offense. I don't know Hackett. A lot of people had dirt on their hands. It wasn't just Russell. He didn't just flip. He still has it. This is BS that hit a wall. Shoot. They couldn't get a play in. There were 29th in the league and pre-snap penalties on both sides of the ball. And then he goes on to say this. This was really where he, he kind of dropped the bomb on them. That was a message. They can only beat the explicit out of you so much. But everybody's got a little stink on their hands. It's not just Russell. It was, poor, it was a poor offensive line. It might have been the worst coaching jobs in the history of the NFL. That's how bad it, that's how bad it was. Man, yo, just yeah. What are your thoughts on this, B. Marsh? I mean, did Deshaun Payton really let the you know the former coaching staff of the Broncos have it here? I'm still catching my breath from my uh, are you? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 rant. So I'm a, I would love to hear Ashley Stocks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me, I need another 45 to to 90 um, seconds. Yeah, my breath. There you go. I think it's fair. It wasn't just Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. I know that the quarterback takes all the, the glory and the, the quarterback also takes all the fault. So Russell Wilson was the fun person to blame. Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson was the biggest name to blame. But you also have to look at, you know, the Broncos as a unit, as a well, you know, oiled machine or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And the team was not constructed correctly for his success. You know, mm -hmm. the offensive line was terrible. I agree with that. The coaching staff didn't really seem like they understood the task at hand. And that wasn't just something that was specific to Russell Wilson. There were a lot of players who said that there was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of growing pains. There was a lot of shortcomings. There was a lot of things that they feel could have been avoided if there was a little bit more clarity and direction. Now, worst coaching job in history might be a little bit dramatic. That's a reason. Huh? <laughs> because we've seen some really crappy coaching jobs, and I'm sure we've, we haven't seen some really crappy coaching jobs because we weren't alive to see them. But I think if you go down the history books, I don't even think this is top 10. <laughs> so I get it. You got to defend your QB. You got to go ahead and, and up yourself up a little bit. But that's a little dramatic. <laughs> um, like I said... The failures of the Denver Broncos last season were beyond Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was an intricate part of it. I don't think that you can forego any fault from him. But he wasn't the sole factor of it. And I think that this will be an interesting season for them because now there's been, you've trimmed the fat, you've kind of you know got rid of the weak links, and you got the coach that I wanted. Mm -hmm. You got the coach that a lot of people wanted. You have a Russell Wilson who I believe he's lost maybe about 10 pounds. Is that If I read that correctly, he's, he's trim, he's slim, he's ready to go. He's 15. been training. 15, 15. okay. Oh, he's working. So he's working. You got, you got healthy players back. If the Broncos can't get it done, and when I say get it done, do I expect this team to win a Super Bowl? No. But this team should be a winning team. They should be a playoff team. And if they are not – then people are going to go back to this quote and say, well, now what, Sean Payton? Yeah, yeah. they might. They so, might. So, 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 so here's what I would say, Ashley. Uh, I, I do uh, uh, love Coach Payton's honesty. Uh, you know, it's refreshing. We don't always get this from our players and our coaches, right? We get these stale answers. We get the diplomatic answers. Right. That, that let's not rock the boat answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I do like this and it's refreshing. And I do uh, 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 agree with coach that it is one of the worst, worst excuse me, one of the worst uh, 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 coaching outings that we've ever seen. Wow. OK. Of numbers. In history, but, though, because it, yeah, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. OK. You have a top five defense and then on the offensive side. OK. Um, you're known as an offensive guy and your offense goes out there and you're last in points, okay? Averaging 16 uh, 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 points a game compared to the number one offense in the league and Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs averaging almost 30 points a game with so Wilson. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's a problem, Okay. 
And there are other things that transpire, right? So I do agree there. But I also need to make sure that this conversation is balanced because, you know, there's so much more that goes into team sports. Coach said it. There was 20 hands involved, probably. There were so many people involved in this. So we can't just blame it all on Coach Hackett, right? You got to look at what else happened last year. The Denver Broncos also had more people on injured reserve than any other team. Their injured reserve accounted for almost $60 million in salary cap. So that puts a team in a tough position to actually go out there and operate and operate at a high level. So there's 14 guys on injured reserve, eight of whom were starters, and the rest were contributors to special teams. We're talking guys like Tim Patrick. Now, I know Russell personally loved Tim Patrick and potentially was one of his number of targets. Their starting running back, who was they were so excited about, went down before and started. So Tim Patrick and also Javante Williams both went down before training camp. Those are two starters. Their left tackle, Garrett Bowles, went down in training camp or, or right at the beginning of the season. Bill Turner, Bill Turner, their offensive tackle, also went down. Their starting center, Loyal Crush, Crushenberry, also went down. And there's other running backs and there's other contributors on the offensive side, obviously defensive side as well, that went down. So that's a big deal when you have so many guys go down. So it's refreshing uh, 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 to hear Coach Payton be so brutally honest. Um, you know, I like it. I wish more athletes, more coaches did it. Um, but there's so much more to this. And there's some people saying Coach Payton should have did it, shouldn't have said this, he shouldn't have said it. Hell, hell, to me, this is him actually pushing back on his narrative and actually cl continue to clean house uh, within the Broncos, saying, look, get your back. It's not all y'all, right? And I'm tired of people pushing blame on Russell. I'm tired of people pushing blame on the guys that are here. I'm actually going to come out here, take the bullet, and say it's it, it, and deflect it. It's not them. We're moving on. It's how we're going to conduct ourselves. So I think it was a tactic for him to just be himself and be real, but also continue to support his guys and move forward. But I, in all of what you said, factual, but you – did not put any blame on Russell at all. He was terrible last year. Oh yeah, for sure, Ashley. No, so sorry. Like you know, uh, you, you know, maybe yeah, maybe it's just a mistake. I, I ain't doing it intentionally. I was like, <laughs> I, I know that's your boy, Brandon, but you, yeah. let's let's call a spade a spade. He <laughs> was not good last okay. year. Duh. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's, so let's talk about it, Ashley. So here, here's the first thing I would say because I'm always going to have my guys back, right? Think about that. You lose three offensive starters up front, that's a problem. Mm. The first thing we need to do, rule number one on offense, is protect our quarterback. How do you do that? By keeping him upright. That is a problem. The second thing, you lose your, 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 your safety net in Tim Patrick. You also lose your running game. And then also, if your, your brother, who I really like, think he's a phenomenal player, uh, he's older now, but had a phenomenal career, and he's a phenomenal person. Melvin Gordon fumbled six times. He fumbled two, three times. <laughs> I got it. On the one-yard line. Hold on one second. On the one-yard line. If he doesn't fumble the ball the way he did, the Denver Broncos are actually sitting at four and one or something crazy like that. So there's other things around Russell. Now, when you're paid, when a team goes out there and trade away what they trade okay. for you and they pay you what they pay you, you have to find a way. Okay. Absolutely. Did he stink it up at times? Absolutely. But then there's this whole thing of Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson trying to combine offenses and then go out there with the pressure of, oh, we're going to go to the Super Bowl. Not everybody's going to be Tom Brady. People are saying that Aaron Rodgers may not be able to do what Tom Brady was able to do, leaving the New England Patriots, going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and winning the Super Bowl in year one. That's extremely hard. So hopefully, Russell has corrected what he needed to correct. A little uh, uh, humble pie as well, how he may operate. You know, he's coming out, let's ride, let's ride. Denver Bronco Nation, let's ride, let's ride. So now everybody's humble. Let's see what happens now. Okay. We're good then, Corey. We can move That's on. good? We good now? We good. <laughs> we good. I, I, I had to make sure because he's always coming down on my QB and how, oh, you got to get the job, but just make sure it's the same energy. We can move it along, Corey. No, well, no, I got I got a question, though. Are the Broncos going to be a playoff team? I forget. Yes. I don't know if you, any of you guys said, so you did, you did make I said it. 
Said, well, well, it's just funny because I've been following, you know, I've been following the chat and people are saying that, yo, we, we throwing that uh, that playoff word around a little too loosely. So they, they want to know who are the seven teams in the AFC actually going to be making the playoffs if we got the Broncos making the playoffs. Well, let's do this. Let's come up with our list for Monday show. Okay. We'll make that a topic. Throw the graphics up there. Like we'll what? have it written mm -hmm. in stone. And we'll see who's right come the end of football season. Like so our, we'll like our playoff teams. Seven, seven teams, teams, NFC, seven teams, AFC to make the playoffs. Okay. Then we'll do right, that can, for can Monday show. Ashley, can I give a teaser? No. <laughs> but Damn. We'll, we'll do it for Monday show. Well, I'm wondering, so it's just going to be like like where the playoffs start? Or do, do just, we actually? No, just teams, the seven teams from the NFC, seven teams oh, from like the that. AFC that we think will be in the playoffs. It doesn't have to be in order. It doesn't okay. have to just the teams. Well, well. Well, Ashley said I can't give a teaser, but Ashley already said this in the show, so I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> the Jets, the Jets are coming out of AFC. Okay. That's all I'll say, and then I'll listen to Ashley, and we'll uh, dive into this on Monday. This that's this actually gonna be a great segment. I think it is a great sure. segment.